Well, it's been an exciting couple of days with the uh, helicopters and all of the work going on the power lines and trying to get some good pictures of them and I hope you're enjoying them. Put them up on YouTube as well as uh, sent them out uh, to you and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy them. If you think somebody else will enjoy them, uh, refer them to my YouTube channel and let them pick off the uh, try on power lines uh, video. Uh, today we're continuing with our uh, chronological Bible and we're in one of my favorite stories or events as a better word to say. Uh, one that I've preached on many times about the four men carrying uh, the paralytic and uh, we find it in Matthew chapter 9 verses 1 through 8 and we find it in uh, Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through uh, 12 and we find it also in Luke chapter 5 verses 17 through 26. This is the ninth event of 55 events that happened in the Galilean ministry of Jesus around AD 27 and chronological order and we find that Jesus slipped away to pray. I think that's significant uh, when we read those words and it's easy to skip over that one little verse, uh, verse 16 in Luke uh, and uh, chapter 5, uh, because Jesus did that often. It ought to tell you that he didn't uh, just preach it, he practiced it. He recognized that prayer was important to talk to the Father, be sure he was in tune with everything the Father wanted him to do and we should be doing the same thing. And uh, as he's teaching, uh, he's teaching in a home and uh, there are some men that really truly believe that they have a paralytic friend who could be healed by Jesus. They had faith that Jesus could heal them. They didn't go waste their time carrying a paralytic uh, to a house unless they felt that Jesus could do it. But I want you to notice that it tells us in these accounts of this particular event uh, that they weren't able to get through the door uh, to bring this man to Jesus. And the title of the message that I preach, or one of the messages that I preach on this is On the Way or In the Way. Uh, and here's a man that's desperately in need of Jesus' healing, and uh, the people, even though their intentions were good listening to Jesus, uh, they, they got in the way. Uh, they, they weren't sensitive to the needs of others around them. They weren't interested in what Jesus could do for others. They were only interested in what Jesus could do for them. If the shoe fits, don't put it on. I, I really believe that we need to be sensitive to people around us and we need to bring people to Jesus and not get in the way of people being brought to Jesus. However, we might block that. In any case, they have to go up on the roof. They rip off a section of the roof. Uh, somebody's going to have to pay for that. So obviously they're willing to pay the price. Uh, they're willing to go through all of the effort. And they're still believing. And obviously this man on the stretcher, especially when he's brought up on the roof and getting ready to be lowered down, has to have the faith that Jesus could do something if he was lowered down. And, of course, he is successfully lowered down before Jesus. And Jesus says something astonishing. He says, your sins are forgiven. Well, you say, well, he, but he came for healing. He came so he could walk again. Uh, but Jesus knows the thoughts of all of those around. And he knew the thoughts of those that were saying, well, how can you possibly forgive sins? And why aren't you healing this man? And so he says, in order that you might believe, he says to the man, take up your pallet and leave <laughs> and the man does just that it's a wonderful wonderful event that uh, tells us that Jesus saw the healing as a secondary not as nearly as important as the forgiveness of sins and notice that it's the faith of both the man on the stretcher and those that brought him in uh, that Jesus honors that faith that even in paralytic uh, could rise up and walk and he does it immediately and he certainly puts those that are questioning his ability and who he is uh, puts them to shame because he does exactly uh, what he said he could do well it's a wonderful event and I hope that it helps you again apply this to your lives 
that we ought to be bringing people to Jesus, not getting in the way of people being brought to Jesus, that we ought to have the faith that Jesus can do whatever he says he will do, but not claim for him things that he's not already promised us. And then we also ought to recognize that Jesus put clearly in perspective the temporal healing versus the forgiveness of sins. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.